Ito ang Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang naiba at kakaibang plataforma sa digital broadcast. Mula Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao hanggang sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo. Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang sandiga ng sambayanan mula sa walang labis at walang kulang na pagbabalita, paglilingkod, maglalahad ng mga mapagbuong komentaryo at usaping pambayan para sa kapakanan ng karamihan. Broad Streamcast Communicators, tuwirang maglilingkod ngayon hanggang sa susunod na henerasyon. Buhay Online Sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Ating tunghayan, pakinggan at tuklasin ang mga pangyayari at kaganapan sa mundo ng online. Buhay online, sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Alamin ang pinakalatest trends mula sa trabaho at kung hanggang sa anak ang narating ng teknolohiyang ito. At ngayon, narito na ang ating host, ang ating Teki Mami, si J.C. Bautista. Hello, yes, yes, yes. It's Friday, everyone. TGIF. Sabi nga nila, TGIF, thank God it's Friday. Well, it's a Friday once again. Napakabilis na naman nagdaan ang week. You know, it's, a, it's been another week here of Boy Online. And uh, on a Friday, it's not so hot today, actually, 27 degrees. It's comfortable weather. Pero syempre, pag nandun ka sa init ng araw, wala mahinit. But uh, it's actually, you know, we're having better weather than sa Japan. I can imagine it's 36 degrees. Diba? Mas mainit sila sa atin. But, um, you know, it's a weekend. And, uh, and po, diba? for the past few days, we've been seeing a surge in the infections ng, ng virus kasi nga, lahat ng tao nagbabiyahe-biyahe na, nag, nag, uh, nag, uh, what they call this, outing, but you know, COVID-19 positivity rate is up in Metro Manila, expected naman yan. Nine other areas na bago ang infected na naman sa Metro Manila. The COVID-19 positivity rate, okay, from June 25 to June 29 in 10 areas in the country, has increased. Independent Pandemic Monitor of the Research said on Friday. Okay, Seven of the areas also reached the World Health Organization benchmark of 5%. So, ano, ano, ano tong mga areas na to na nagkaroon ng surge? Ito po, Cavite. Okay, Cavite. From 5.9% to 13.2%. With the, thank God for technology. You know, we have real-time information on things. Na ba? Hindi na tayo kailangan ngayon palagi manood ng, ng TV or news or mag-antay sa radio because we can find out, find it out online. Diba? So yun nga, sa Cavite, from 5.9% to 13.2%. Laguna, from 7.6% to 8.8%. Pampanga, from 5.9% to 7.7%. Metro Manila, oh, from, Pampanga pala, from 6% to 7.5%. Uh, up escalating pala to, uh, fluctuate pababa itong infections. Iloila from 5.7% to 6.9%. Batangas from 5.6% to 6.6%. At sa Benguet, 3.2% to 6%. So, sa Pampanga, dito sa amin, tumaas ng ilang puntos. 
Okay? Expected din kasi marami nag ano dito ng outing, outing. Positivity rates in select regions, NCR positivity rate increased to 7.5%. Cavite positivity rate up to 13.2%. Let us all stay safe, di ba? Kasi huwag natin anuhin na mag-iba pa yung ating alert level. Please, let's still wear masks when we're going to enclosed public places and social distancing pa rin. Ito pa, the three areas whose positivity rate increased but did not exceed the WHO benchmark were Bulacan from 2.9% to 4%, Cebu 2.8% to 3.5%, Tabao del Sur, 2.1% to 3.3%. Positivity rate refers to the number of all tests for conducted for uh, that were conducted for COVID-19, which yield, uh, yielded positive results. Latest available data from the Department of Health showed that the positivity rate of the country is still within the WHO benchmark at 3.7%. So, yung safe pa rin po tayo sa pangkalahatan, overall, we're still below the 5% na alert level. So, so di, hindi pa rin papalitan yung ating alert level na na I hope na one eh, kasi lawampas na ang Pampanga tsaka yung NCR. Tingnan natin itong next week. Kasi diba every every week or every two weeks yan. The health department however reminded the public that the positivity rate should not be the sole metric for assessing the current COVID-19 situation. Okay? Saying it is also important to consider the overall picture of transmission and case severity, okay? The DOH logged on Thursday an additional 1,309 cases of COVID-19, the most in four months. So, yun nga. Kasi, di ba? Bati nga, two, two, uh, three digits na lang eh. This, this country's caseload is now at 3,704,407,000 uh, with 7,871 active cases. 3,635,981 recoveries and 60,555 deaths. Okay? So, ayan po ang, ang aking uh, current event regarding the COVID uh, situation here in the Philippines. Okay? As far as, uh, syempre, yesterday, turnover na po ng uh, pag-run pag, uh, ng ating bansa. The, the new president-elect, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., is already put in place at mag-goodbye na po si ating ex-Pangulo Rodrigo Duterte. I'm hoping for a better Philippines and a better future for all our children and for us. Sana po, no? Because ang dami-daming haka and speculation because, hindi ba, the, this is the son of the deposed Ferdinand Marcos 36 years ago, uh, I mean, uh, 36 years ago, no 1989, 86, sorry, when uh, na-depose yung kanyang tatay. Tapos yung ngayon, ay ang anak. So let's just hope right, that things right, not this, will not be the same. Okay? So, uh, with regards to uh, uh, technology in the Philippines, uh, yung blockchain po, uh, yung function ng mga, hold on a second. Uh, the Philippines po, okay, is, uh, the government, Philippine government launched uh, a blockchain training program, okay. Uh, the Philippine Science and Technology Department recently uh, launched a blockchain training program. Ano po ito? It recognizes the significance of this growing technology that could benefit the country. Ito pa yung mga cryptocurrency, di ba? Uh, crypto adoption is spreading worldwide, talaga. So other nations may follow soon. You must learn all you can about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. The Philippines is looking into every opportunity to grow and improve. It will become a prime example of how crypto technology drives nation building and the and, and, and country makatulong, no? We will just... Uh, uh, the, the Philippines blockchain training program was discussed from from the point of Department of Science and Technology (DOST). They were, they talked about the country's current crypto tools and services. 
uh, they, they looked into other blockchain use cases that it may adopt soon, okay? So, ayun po, inanas po na ang Philippines po nag-launch ng blockchain training program, okay? This news po came from the Executive Director, Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emer Emerging Technology Research and Development, or yung DOST, P-C-I-E-E-R-T. And the Rico Paring, it said that the Philippine Council for Industry, or yung PCIERD, uh, in connection with the OST, started a trading program for blockchain technology. He said that it aims to explore user cases for blockchain, sa healthcare, emergency aid, financial support, pag issue ng mga visa at passport, trademark res registration, at government record storage. Okay? Uh, sinabi rin ni Paringit that the country lacks local experts in blockchain technology. Totoo naman. So, yung PCIERD struggled in establishing yung blockchain training. So, kailangan po nila pang maghanap ng mga resource people, no? Uh, we had challenges getting experts or, or seasoned developers to share know-how on blockchain-based systems development. I I heard itong si ano rin nag-blockchain eh. Si, uh, si po, ano po? Paolo Bidiones, right? So, DOST Secretary Fortunato de la Peña also said blockchain is an important emerging technology that the Philippines must explore. But it emphasized that the DOST's primary goal is to build non-cryptocurrency applications, okay? Still, it needs blockchain development specialists who can aid the government in applying this technology, okay? Blockchain is also part of the DOST Regional Research Institution, uh, institution program. Its exact title is Application of Blockchain Technology to the Gimaras Mango Supply Chain. Okay? Tung project po, I will ensure the authenticity of exported mango products. Also, it would use it would use blockchain technology to track the goods until they reach the consumers. Okay? So, yan po. Uh, kasi nakarating na naman po ang cryptocurrency sa Philippines eh. So, uh, magkakaroon po ng training dyan, okay? Current crypto apps and services in the Philippines, meron na po, the Southeast Asian nation, okay, has been developing blockchain technology even before the DOST's plan. For example, it has a cryptocurrency exchange backed by its central bank. So, ang, Philipp ang central bank pinabak pinabak up na pala itong blockchain. PDAX is a crypto exchange platform backed by the Banco Central <coughs> ng Pilipinas. Like Coinbase, it enables Filipinos to trade digital assets conveniently, okay? Meanwhile, this other crypto exchange, yung Coins.ph, ito po yung mas kilala dito sa Philippines, yung Coins.ph, partnered with Ripple, a company behind the cryptocurrency XRP and SBI Remit, the largest money transfer provider in Japan. So legit po itong mga, mga pangalan na to, ha? Yan po, narinig nyo, Coins.ph. Together, they allow quicker and cheaper uh, border transactions <clears throat> between the Philippines and Japan. They use Ripple XRP to facilitate fund transfers, making remittances easier for overseas Filipino workers. What's more, di ba? The Philippines has grown accustomed to online payment apps. O nga, ano na tayo rin dyan eh? For pretty soon, di ba? Pero ang China nga, wala na sila hindi na gumagamit ng pera eh. They just use WeChat for everything. Sinaswipe lang lahat. You know, they don't even... Ano na, exchange hands ng pagbayad ng bills, no? ng paying in bills or, or coins. Sa China, lahat swipe-swipe, okay? Uh, using their own platform na yung WeChat. What's more, the Philippines has grown accustomed to online apps. The biggest names are Paymaya and Gcash, and, now they, no and they now let users store cryptos in their apps. In other words, <clears throat> they double as crypto wallets. Even better, di ba, users can buy cryptos from them too. Moreover, the Philippines also excels in adopting yung mga NFT games. Ayan na. It made headlines after Filipinos grew fond of playing Axie Infinity. <clears throat> Yan, marami pong na sumali sa Axie Infinity. Maraming kumita, may mga ano rin na natalo. It is a play-to-earn mobile game that lets players earn cryptos as they play. They gain smooth love potions, SLP and Axie Infinity Shards, or AXS, and convert them into Philippine Pesos. As a result, the game became a fun source of passive income for Filipinos during the pandemic. Yan nga, Axie Infinity also lets players earn 
in-game items as non-fungible tokens. Ayan po ang NFT, non-fungible tokens. An, N an NFT po makes a piece of digital media unique so that players can sell them on the Axie marketplace. So, at another time po, at another day, mapag-usapan po natin more itong cryptocurrency tsaka itong mga Axie Infinity kung paano, kung paano nagkakaroon ng uh, income dito. Alright? Kasi ito, uh, we will discuss it at another time. Okay? So, yan po. As a result, the di this digital goodies na mga NFT sinasabi becomes another source of cash flow for Filipino players. They also made it easier for Filipinos to adopt the technology. Blockchain's possibilities for the Philippines reach infinity and beyond. Okay? So, nausapan na lang natin pa next time po yung tukos sa other opportunities ng ng blockchain for the Philippines. Okay? Kasi kailangan natin ano yan eh. Isa-isahin para na rin tayo mag, uh, what they call this, mag uh, seminar about it. Alright? So we, we will deal with that or talk about that another time. So anyway, uh, Friday po ngayon, no? uh, do you guys have plans for the weekend? I'm just wondering why I don't see my comments. Hello there, whoever's watching, I don't see your names. It doesn't come up. Hello there. Thank you, thank you. Whoever's watching today, welcome to Buhay Online. I cannot see the names, but uh, let me see for myself only if I can. Long days na yan, I don't see. Mm. Let me see. What can I What I see is still. Um, am I not broadcasting? Sister, sir, Mister Sir, Selba, sa pagnuno kita ko. I am not. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay, I see myself now. Sanchez, sorry. Okay. There. Yeah. What happened? Sorry. There you go. I can see myself. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, okay, so as I was, uh, okay, so now, yeah, but, uh, meron bang bagyo, wala. Oh my lord. Okay. So, we were talking about uh, the whole week, last time we talked about uh, work-life balance, okay, work ethics, work from home as opposed to uh, one hybrid uh, working. Uh, next week, we will talk about hybrid learning, uh, which is also, I think, face-to-face. -face. But at some point, I, do, I think there's going to be an uh, hybrid learning to some extent. Okay. Um, okay. So now we'd like to. We have somebody has to talk about. Deba, we already talked about. We gave tips on how to be happy, how to be positive, how to we how we can break bad habits. Uh, happy, uh, we have to get to be to how to be a happier person. Okay, uh, so ngayon summer na, so anong anong pinaplana natin for summer? Well, okay, uh, somebody asked, ano ba, what can we do in this pandemic during the summer? What do we have in mind to do? Well, summer and sunshine is a more, it's already happening. You're already experiencing summer 
Matagal ng mainit. Ang malayo na masamar dito. But summer and sunshine, di ba? Among the most beautiful things people can imagine, lalo na yung mga coming from cold, cold countries. Sa kanila, bless yung summer at pagpunta sa beach. As pleasant as it is to enjoy high temperatures and good weather, it is also important <clears throat> to protect yourself from excessive uh, ex uh, exposure to sun. Okay? There are many everyday measures that can be implemented with little effort. Kaya ngayon nga, di ba, nagkaka-heat stroke sa Japan, nagkaka-heat stroke. There are many everyday measures that we can do to implement this effort. This, uh, uh, I'm going to talk to you about iba-ibang strategies that you uh, that you can do to protect yourself and your health from heat shock and other adverse effects of heat and sunshine. Kasi nga, di ba, usong heat stroke, okay? Okay, these are the things that we need to do to help us get by with this hot weather and hot spells, okay? Okay, ito na. Let's do it. Okay, unang-una na, we must drink enough. I just drank, right? Yeah, kasi diba, pag mainit, nag-dry yung throat mo, dehydration is one of the biggest dangers that lurk during summer. As soon as the face reddens or headaches appear, yun, pag namula na yung mukha nyo at saka tumakit ng ulo nyo, there is a lot to be said for too intense sun exposure, right? But there are many other symptoms that can be attributed to dehydration. Eh. These include, for example, circulatory problems, nausea, confusion, or muscle cramps. To avoid this, drink enough from the start and wear a hat or cap at all times. Okay? Okay. Ano pa? Sun protection. Yeah. Okay. Yan nga. Talaga. Given yan. Especially at work. Okay. It is not always possible to get out of the sun. This is the case, for example, when the desk is directly under a window. Or pag nag-commute ka, di ba? Lalabas ka, nainita ka ng araw. In such a case, it makes sense to work with the high-quality sun protection films. These reliably block UVA and UVB rays and thus prevent heat-related complaints. Furthermore, energy saving is possible with sun protection films. Ito po yung lalagay sa bintana. No? Sa po sa trabaho. When the room doesn't heat as much or even sa bahay, the air conditioner doesn't have to work as hard to achieve the desired cooling performance. So, mag-try kayo maglagay ng mga sun, uh, UV-protected film sa bintana nyo. Or itint nyo yung siguro yung ano, bintana. Okay? Of course, avoid too much sun. Yun lang naman. Makes sense talaga. Avoid too much sun. Many people like to spend time in the sun in summer. Okay? You want to fill up on vitamin D? Okay lang. But you're... Kasi, and then you get, you're hoping to get a good tan, di ba? Sa Amerika talaga, feel na feel nila magpatan. Kaya, pero nainggit sila sa mga kulay ng, ano, ng Filipinos. Sorry, but ako hindi ako kulay Filipino. Mukhang ako, ano, it's not the pale moon, right? I mean, no, this, actually, this uh, sedentary life and pandemic talaga staying indoors yan. Lalo, pumuti ako. Hindi naman ako, well, talaga, I guess, really maputi ako, but, before, nung pandemic, hindi naman ako ganito kapute kasi exposure naman to sun, tsaka yung no, going to the to the beach and traveling. Pero pumuti ako because of this pandemic. But I'm not really naman fair, okay? Hindi lang nag-google ka pa yun. Anyway, so avoid too much sun. Many people like to spend time in the uh, sun in the summer nga para to get a good tan. It is also not always possible to get out of the sun, especially when going for a walk or when you go to the beach. But the, that should be the goal. In the shade, if it is also possible to enjoy the good weather and spend a pleasant time without the risk of heat-related illnesses or yung sunstroke, di ba? Pero yun nga, pag nag-beach ka, uh, use this ano, Itong mga, ayaw, hindi ko napapakita para mag-endorse ako. Pero yung mga sunscreen, diba? Yung mga UV protected, kung ilang percent yan. 20 proof, whatever proof. Mag-sunscreen kayo pag kalalabas kayo or mag-beach kayo or mag-swimming. Alright? What else? Okay? Wear sunglasses. See? Maraming tao nakakalimot to wear sunglasses when they go out in the sun. 
during uh, the summer months, it is important to wear good quality protective sunglasses. Such glasses ensure that you can see well, even, okay, even in intense sunlight, and that your eyes are not negatively affected by direct sunlight. Masama rin yun sa mata, okay? However, there are big differences in the quality of sunglasses. It is therefore advisable to compare the different models closely and to choose, okay, uh, the products from high-quality suppliers. In addition, the glasses must fit you perfectly and protect your eyes completely as possible. Rely on night cooling. Rely on night cooling. Excuse me. What does it mean? I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's in the office or in your or in a ka, It's necessary to get the temperatures down at night. All right. In the evening, it is still pleasantly warm outside, but significantly cool, cooler during the day. You should take advantage of this by opening the windows to allow air exchange. Cool air is available in the morning, and blinds or windows uh, window films can be used to ensure. Uh, that a room does not heat up again quickly. Pero yun na nga, may maiwasan din mag-aircon. Oops! Hala! Ito na, mali pa lang ako. Don't turn the air conditioning up too high. Air conditioning systems are used both at work and in one's own home or in the car. These offer the possibility of cooling down the temperatures in a room to a desired temperature and thus ensure a pleasant living and working atmosphere. Care, care must be taken to ensure sensible cooling and not bring the temperature down too far. Ah, I see. Well, and then. Hmm. Okay. So, yun. Yun po yung mga tips po para sa heat stroke. Okay? I'll just review. Drink enough water. Sun protection. Okay? Avoid too much sun. Okay? Wear sunglasses and rely on night cooling as in balancing temperature. And don't turn the air conditioning up too high. I think it's high. Okay? Okay. So, yun. Yun na po yun, no? Alright. So, next thing we want to talk about is... Hold on, please. Yun naman. We talked about, yan, lifestyle that helped us. Uh, fitness and health, we already addressed the COVID situation, but... Uh, ito pa yung isang tinanong, no? Because uh, we, well, we're de- we were talking about working conditions, working habits this past week, at uh, saka yung paano makakatulong, magkaroon ng positive frame of mind sa pagtrabaho, and all those things, okay? Now we'll talk about, okay, how, di ba, sometimes you don't get enough sleep, how do you deal with that at work? How can you not be sleeping well? Let's find out, okay? Uh, anti-zombie tips na itong bibigay ko. No? Kasi minta nag-zonk out tayo sa work, right? Because we lack sleep. So how do we deal with that, no? Tips to fit a work, to fit at work despite, uh, to be, this is how to be fit at work despite little sleep. Lalo na ngayon, babalik na tayo sa, buwan bumabalik na yung marami ng mga trabaho na bumalik sa office, nag-return to work, and nasanay ka din sa work from home, somehow, di ba, antukin ka during the day or something. So, uh, this is how we can deal with it. Let me tell you about it in a nutshell. Okay? Did you sleep badly? Kunyari, nakatulog ka ba? Hindi ka ba nakatulog na mahimbe? Did your children wake you up at night because they were afraid na kumukulo, kumikid lahat? Did the exciting Sunday night crime thriller like, keep you in front of the TV for too long? Kagaya, kaya nag-alarm na yung clock. Hindi, yung pala, hindi ka pa natutulog kasi nag-Netflix ka hanggang umaga. Netflix marathon ng Korean novela or, or, or your this thriller movies or series. Or maybe you were just, okay, nanonood ka Stranger Things, sinapos mo. Or maybe you were just celebrating your best friend's birthday for too long. Regardless of why, you have one of those zombie working days, okay, where le- uh, tiredness turns even routine tasks into a challenge. You know, parang hindi ka makaperform ng mahusay sa trabaho kasi puyak ka, right? We now have uh, these tips to give you on how to get through 
the working day, na parang ano ka pa rin, energetic at fit. So what do you do? Okay? Para makapag-relax. Okay? First on item on the list is tara, yoga. Can you leave? Yoga, yes, yes. Yoga. Incidentally, okay, you can supplement or if necessary, replace the effects of coffee with yoga. Why? How? Wow, really? So, sabi, sabi nitong uh, ano na to, expert na ito, na si uh, Sonia, okay? Sonia said, uh, Sonia of Art Article Skill. Uh, ito po yung Article Skill is a uh, so parang website that helps you deal with uh, mind and body issues, fitness and health, lifestyle and beauty. So sabi to si Sonia na <coughs> excuse me yoga helps okay to, to let, get you out of that zombie like state sa trabaho if you are puyat or you know, inaantok she said that the so called sun salutation is a sequence of simple movements that get the circulation going and give you an incredible freshness in the morning, all right? So, if you still have a little before you go to the office, if you have a little bit of time before you go to the office, get out of get out that yoga mat and try the following video instructions. Okay? Uh, following video uh, and, and try the following instructions, okay? Fresh air, okay? Ito una una, fresh air. Yoga is not your thing or you want to go on better? Then why not leave your car in the garage today and grab your bike, diba? Or just run to work if the distance allows, okay? Distance allows. So, kanina, ang basta ang unang kailangan gawin para to be, be more active and alive, mag-yoga ka bago ka pumasok sa trabaho kong kuyenta. Ang sunod, get some fresh air. Okay, get some fresh air. Kasi, ay, unyari, ay mo mag-yoga, mag-fresh air ka na lang. Leave your car somewhere, park it, and then grab your bike, and just run to work if the distance allows it. Kung malapit lang ang trabaho mo, lumabas ka, maglakad ka sa open air para rin maka, makahinga ka, right? Yung fresh air na malayo sa mga tao, na wala, may social distancing, pero maka, para makahinga ka, right? The fresh air and exercise will put an end to your tiredness or sleepiness, at least for an hour or two. It will keep your adrenaline up so that you can have energy to go to your workplace and work. Alright? Okay, next. Quickly out of bed. And I said, behead. When the alarm goes off in the morning after too little sleep, it is tempting to use the snooze function. I know, I'm guilty of that. Pero actually, ako naman kasi most of the time, nauna pa ako sa alarm ko. Grabe, my body clock, I dictate I dictate my time to wake up. And, and like I've said before, I only sleep three to four hours a day. What? Yeah, I'm naturally like that. I've been sleeping this way since I was in high school. I used to have insomnia and couldn't really sleep, hardly sleep at all. But I improved na yan sa three to four hours. But I'm getting better because, so to speak, parang I now have a, you know, kasama in my life, you know. So, I'm, and he always reminds me to, to sleep, 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 try to sleep. So, nag, nag, ano na yan, nag, nag, bumubuti na in a way. Some, the other day, I slept for five hours. But, when I slept for five hours, parang binugbo. Because, I, I feel so sluggish and so heavy when I sleep for more than four hours. Grabe. But, it's supposed to be healthy nga to sleep longer. Especially that I'm aging. I'm aging. I'm older. So, kailangan natin ng at least Seven hours, six to seven hours of sleep. When you want to achieve your eight, in sa akin talaga super below par, three to four. So nag advance na ako ng four and a half, almost five hours of sleep. Titi nang ko kung kaya ko yung five hours na nag araw araw. I will try. Kasi pero niko talaga kaya yung seven to eight na eh. sleep has really not been a luxury that I enjoy. I've enjoyed. Some people really love to sleep in sleep. My present company included yung aking pong asawa or my, my fiancé. Pagkatapos ng magluto, gawa ng trabaho niya, sleep. Automatic sa kanya yun. You know? And, and sarap mong tulog. Pero ganun naman dapat talaga. 
it's just me that's not normal with my sleeping habits. So quickly out of bed, okay. Um, uh, it is, uh, you know, when you when you when you hit the snooze button, five or ten minutes more sleep. Nothing sounds more heavenly to you right now. Kapag ka ganon na tutulog ka, tapos tigla ka nagising na alarm clock. Is snooze mo pa? But you know, five minutes, five or ten minutes more sleep. Nothing sounds more heavenly, yes. But then you should finally be reasonably awake after the third or fourth ring of the alarm clock. Lie in bed with your eyes open, staring at the ceiling and bathed in self-pity about how incredibly tired you are today and what long day lies ahead of you. It goes without saying, diba, that um, the motivation to get up sinks to a minimum. So, approach it like you would with a band-aid when you get up quickly and painlessly. The alarm goes off, you swing out of bed, and before you even know how tired you are, you're almost under the shower. Okay? Nakatakbo ka na. Okay? A practical trick for this is to simply set up your cell phone alarm clock out of reach of the bed so you have to get up in the morning to switch it off uh, the annoying beeping, which is what I do. I have two cell phones. Yung isa ko po, pang alarm lang. Yung smart ko. So, like clockwork yun, every day, it just rains. It just beeps. To wake me up whether I'm already awake or not kasi nauna pa ako talaga sa kanya. It's just alarm. So, I am reminded all the time that I have to be up a certain time. Okay? Next, light snacks instead of heavy meals. Wow, talaga? Kala ko ba masama yun na lang masyado na? Well, your greatest enemy on a day is of course the midday low. Okay? Ano yun? If your energy level is already a plus minus zero, how much lower can it sink? So that you are finally stuck in idleness after the lunch break. Okay. We, we should uh, avoid the hearty lunch in the canteen today and instead be satisfied with light meals uh, and small snacks or in between. Okay. It is also advisable that eat just enough that your growing stomach is quiet like, like like they say, when you when you feel hunger, eat something, but don't gouge or don't you know overindulge yourself right away, you know, to, to shock your your system. But you are not completely satisfied but, because it is always advisable to eat just enough so that your growing stomach is is quiet. But in most cases, you know, you, you still feel hungry afterwards, right? Because the, the satiety means tiredness. And you have enough of that in your luggage today. So, huwag natin pagbigyan yung ganong feeling, right? Okay, so, taking snacks in between, uh, you should avoid the hearty lunch in the canteen and instead be satisfied with light meals and small packs snacks in between. Okay? So, it's just advisable to, pag nagutom ka, tagyan mo lang naman ang stock stomach mo. Para pumigil yung growling kasi yun ang ano dun eh. Pag masakit yung siya mo na hindi ka kumakain, diba? Uh, or, uh, or hindi ka, hindi ka nakatulog ng tama, uh, sasakit naman yung ulo mo. So, yan, magpa-alarm ka rin and then make it sure na after the snooze button sa ika-apat na time, lumising ka na. Get up. Just Will yourself to get up and go. Okay? Alright? So those are the tips that I could give to you with regards to how to keep fit even when you're less sleep and tired. Okay? Now just to review it, we have to do yoga if we can to relax and shed away all the negativity. But if you don't, you're not into yoga, get some fresh air. Okay? Alright? Uh... Fresh air and exercise will put an end to your tiredness, at least for an hour or two, okay? Then, next one is to quickly get out of bed. Pag nag-alarm, unahan mo na alarm, o kaya, ilang beses pa, patagalin mo pa yung smooth, pero, after the third one, get up already. Otherwise, you'll never get up there. You feel lazy all day, right? Okay, and then eating light snacks instead of heavy meals, understandably so, very good, okay? That's great. 
Let me just take water, please. All right. How come I don't see the names come up? Am I broadcasting? Hmm. Okay, so I have, I have a question here, okay? Because, yeah, we, we talked about the workplace last week. We talked about hybrid working and all that. There was a question. Let me bring it up. It's right here. At the end of the day, we want to answer this question. Is finding a new normal in the workplace possible? Okay? Maari ba tayo magkaroon ng normal state sa ating mga trabaho? Right? Well, let's see. Is finding a new normal in the workplace possible? Yeah. Ay, mayroon pala ako hindi nalagay dito. Hold on. Bear with me because I need to pick up something. Sa iniwan ko lang dyan. But we will tackle this next week. Okay, not today. Um, wait a minute. What happened to me? Okay. Oh, yeah, I like that. No, I have to. I know what to do. What? I'm just going to put up something on the board. I'm sorry, okay? I got it. Okay, here it is. I know. Then we'll discuss it if we have time. Because we, we already did a series on how to get this, how to get that. Well, how to be happy, how to take positive. How do we... Oh, what am I doing? Sorry. Mm. Here you go. Please bear with me. Sorry. Mm. There you go, I got it. Okay, we will deal with this. Not perhaps later if we have time. So going back to the question, is there any, can we find, uh, can we find a new normal in the workplace? Sabi dito, impossible. Bakit naman? Okay. Let's try it out. Okay. Okay, uh, how can we be happy in this new normal? Could we be happy? Could we find a normal life in this pandemic, in this pandemic situation? Is finding a normal life in the workplace impossible? Well, 2022, okay, it's hard to know exactly what to expect from work. We didn't know what to expect this year. Especially with recent developments, experts predict that we may be up against so many things. And we already are up against so many things, okay? Uh, despite employers' hopes, a full-time return to office-based work is looking highly unrealistic as the Omicron virus and then the, uh, uh, the Omicron pushes back return to office plans once again for millions of workers because... It is highly contagious, okay? And given the way the current labor market shifted power to employees, pre-pandemic work structures are likely to become a relic. Thing up to ask. I hope the company that I work for also changes their, their standard things. Okay. Okay, yet for all that seems certain, there is still so much we don't know about how our working environment will evolve this has uh, uh, will evolve this year, but now we're going through it. Uh, this time last year, many people expected 2021 to bring a degree of stability, perhaps even a smooth rollout of hybrid work. 
The emergence of new variants of the virus block this and may well continue so in the months ahead. Pero, truth be told, marami na rin makakalusok na yan sa pagbiyahe na hindi naman na COVID. Pero syempre, the risks are still there at the airport, everywhere. No? Or staying in an airplane for a few hours with breathing the same air, those things. But, you know, uh, uh, amid constantly shifting circumstances, it's hard to pin down where we might find ourselves in 12, month, 12 months' time. To tell you. <clears throat> we'll never know now what's going to happen then. But experts who study employment and the workplace have identified uh, a few trends that are already giving shape uh, with, to the way we'll be working in the coming year. And it might just be a window into the future of a new life for somebody, right? Okay. Mayon, siempre, we are already experiencing this, you know? The normalcy is there are shorter work weeks. You expect shorter work weeks from people, but they could create division, okay? A call for shorter work weeks and condensed hours has been gaining traction in the globe, which companies and entire governments are already exploring this alternative, right? Ano naman yan eh, paunahan lang yung mga yan eh, kung sino makaka-handle. But, it is, it is being thought about, but the short work week may happen, okay? Uh, it's necessary to shake up the structure of when we work, says Abigail Marx, a professor of the future of work at Newcastle University Business School, UK. The 9 to 5, 40-hour uh, worksheet that emerged during the Industrial Revolution, the last time work changed drastically, is no longer sustainable, she says, due to the increasing base work of work initiated by video conferencing software and continued online presence, okay? Mark adds that business and policies make business and policy makers are keen to explore measures that may mitigate the overburdening of employees, which hoping to retain this increase in productivity. The solution that is constantly mentioned in the four-day working week and condensed hours may mean better mental health and work-life uh, work balance for many workers. So, tinitignan na natin po ang pag-shorten ng hours ng trabaho. Pinagawa na ito ng mga mag-presil na ngayon. Okay? So, what are the, the six? Way, uh, what are the ways that uh, working environments have changed? We ano natin, we summarize natin. What are what are the biggest lessons that we've learned about work from 2021? Yan natin. natutunan natin? Okay. What did we learn working in 2021 in this pandemic? What have we learned? Well. Let's find out the biggest lessons about work from 2021. Right? What are they? Okay. Hold on a second. Let's just put the headliner so that they can see. Even if they just come in later, they know what we're talking about. Right? So the lessons that we've learned driving in this pandemic last year, okay, what are those things, okay? Let me just put it up the board, okay, bear with me, sorry. I'm just going to do it sandali lang. Mm. All right, so there you go. I'm just going to put it up. Bear with me. Anyway, if you have any questions, please field your questions through here or through my messenger, all right, on my Facebook. So that, um, there we go. There. Okay, so there you go. 
the biggest lessons that we learned about work in 2021. Okay? So, what natin from that there? Let's find out! Yeah, what happened? Okay. So workplace is now, okay, of course, different to say the least. Talaga nagbago naman na talaga ang workplace. Especially yung mga nag-return to work from the pandemic, okay? Then they found out medyo iba na ayos na opisina. The biggest lessons we've learned about the world of work in 2021 are at once very stark and very exciting, okay? Uh, if there's one phrase we've heard constantly for the past two years, is that work will never be the same again. And it hasn't. And it's not the same. Okay, we all know that, okay? Our, our orientation, everything else, it's changed, okay? On the cusp of 2022, who would have ever imagined that they'd still be figuring out what that means, right? In, in 2021, we assured and we, uh, we we assured we'd return to something a little more consistent, with more concrete answers than we had in 2020. We envisioned um, ourselves back in the offices at least five days a week, returning to the meetings, albeit with more hand sanitizer. But for much of the workforce, things haven't played out that way. If anything, 2021 showed us that there's going to be normal in the world of work is constantly a moving target. Okay, anybody who posts that will get some slack, I think. Even as the state of work and the wider world continues to evolve, we have put on put our finger on a few things. Chiefly, themes that pervaded work throughout 2021 and will color the next year and perhaps even years to come. Okay? So Trying natin po. Wait lang. Medyo ako yun. Nahindi na talaga ako sa ina. Naka-air pa na po kapag pa. For some reason, the air that's coming out of the air conditioning seems warm. Okay? So that's, um, okay. So yun ang unang sinabi. Um, ito na. Yung kung paano tayo, how, what are the biggest lessons we've learned from working in 2021? The flexible work genie is out of the bottle. Alam na natin yan. It didn't take long for huge numbers of workers to find, to figure out how much they like remote work and all the elements that come with it. But in 2020, changes to work set up felt reactive to the pandemic. Yes, cannot blame them because it was something new, something that they're not in fact, sila una because it's one of the China and stuff like that, right? Okay, so. Uh, in 2020, changes to work setups felt reactive to the pandemic and it was hard for employees to know which shift would stick mm -hmm. to Onuman. A year on, it doesn't matter what was supposed to be temporary. Workers are now living in a world with a different uh, work week structures, asynchronous communication, and permanent remote work. And now they've sampled more flexibility. It's unlikely Employers can revoke the changes the pandemic has put in motion whenever their plans must work. Many companies are now giving staff much more freedom to choose where they work. Other firms such as Unilever in, in New Zealand. Uh, hold on a second. Because I don't see the names or anything. But I don't see Angelica. Okay. Okay. Oops. What did I do? Oh. Anyway, so. Now, so yeah, so many companies, 
are giving uh, their and may mga nag-hybrid nag-start po ng hybrid working 